Okay. The, um, the mast has a top which has a pulley on it and down this end it has a bottom and there's a bit jutting out, a tongue that uh, fits into the hull of the boat. On these boats we've worked out that we put it in this channel here and we put it between these two pins. Your mast with all of the uh, the rope set up, um, tied up, so they're out of the road while you put the mast up. You push this up in the air. Now, while ever this is up vertically, it's, there's not going to be much force on it, so it's reasonably easy to handle in the vertical state. Just got to concentrate on keeping a vertical while you push it in. And there it goes into that slot. If you're a very light person, small, you're well advised to get someone to help you with this task or do it for you. The only way that this mask can fall down at the moment is if it falls backwards. It can't fall forward because it hits the front of the thwart and it can't fall sideways because it hits the side of the gates in the thwart. So we've just got to make sure anything we do, we concentrate on making sure that the mask cannot go backwards. Stays. Those, there are these metal wires uh, wrapped around the mast, but in this case they're not. So it's just a little bit more straightforward putting it up today. I'm just going to thread this, this through this saddle, then through this thimble a couple of times, and then I'm going to let the mast back a little bit. Still holding this to make sure the mask doesn't get away from me. Okay, that's probably far enough back. And I'm going to tie three half hitches in that. Pull a loop out to the side, round the back, through the loop, pull it. Once again, loop out to the side, round the back, pull it. And the way we put these in, a little pin here we turn around till it aligns with the slot and the pin will come halfway out it won't come all the way out push it through from the outside towards the inside and turn it with that little um, piece of metal downwards so that it can't come out of the slot yep. there we are here you can see that little lug there turn around to where the slot is and we can pull that through. It will only go so far. Put it over the saddle, line the lug up with the slot, and there we have it. They're both set up now. We don't have to fiddle with these at all. Up to the front, we tension the mast up. The reason why we left this a bit loose to start with was to make sure that we had enough slack in the whole system to put the side stays on. If it was pulled all the way forward, the side stays wouldn't have fit, on, fit it on. As you're tensioning these up, pull down rather than up. So pull down again putting three half hitches around this again. One, two, three. That's to make sure we're doing things a little bit different with these boats compared to the old boats. The, the boom will stay in the boat and it will stay set up. So it's a matter of just connecting it up. We'll see how we do that. We've got to get these other leads free. So I'm pulling the vang off now. 
and normally we can just slot the vein up the top just above the gooseneck and it will stay in there if we put a little bit of tension on it. Now it would appear that we've got a few ropes being put on in some funny order when this boat was uh, uh, put away so we just got a bit of a challenge here to get that sorted out. I'm just undoing them. When you're undoing the halyards, that's the ropes that pull or haul the sails up, we need to be careful not to pull it and find that it goes up the mast because we won't be getting it back in a hurry. So, we'll be putting up the jib. jib is the smaller sail. We have to undo the shackle. These are captive shackles. They're meant to be undone and not pulled right out. That way we don't go looking for pins all the time. We put it in, do it up, get a shackle key which are in the shed tighten it up just above finger tight. Now, we find the tack of the jib, which is the lower point of the jib, at the front of the boat, at the bow. Once again, there's a shackle here. The pin on these ones does come out when you're packing up the boat. The idea is to put the shackle pin straight back into the shackle it comes out of before you get a chance to lose it. They are expensive. Okay, well, here we are. I'm just going to pull the jib up. you through a hole in the cleat there. Through the pulley here. And pull down like mad. Hard as I can. Keep the tension on it. And then wrap it diagonally twice. Flip it over on itself like that, so the cord goes underneath itself, and then do the same. And we can pull it up, and we just wrap that around our hand. Just stick it in against the uh, mast there. We've got the jib up now. This is the port, the starboard side of the boat. I'm doing the same thing with the jib. Just flapping around a bit, it's not too windy, we can just uh, put a bit of tension into both the uh, jib lids and it should uh, stop it from uh, flapping around all over the place. This is the halyard for the mainsail. It's been tied up here so it doesn't go flying up the mast. We have a ring on this. Um, okay, connect this up. We don't use the shackle on this. We we'll make a loop, put it through, then put that little bead through the loop as it comes through to the other side of the sail. And it just holds it there as long as there's tension on the sail, which there always is. Okay, so 
moving the sail up. So it's a good idea to look up before you do anything. Because something might be twisted. If it is, you're going to have to pull the sail down to untwist it. as far as it will go and then uh, we just let it back a bit and we have to put this shackle pin in Pally it through the hole in the horn fleet, through the ring here. And that ring allows us to have a three to one ratio to pull that sail up. Now, you don't have to pull it up nearly as hard with the mainsail as you did with the jib. So we just take sort of the creases out of the sail uh, at the front of the sail. Once again, four diagonals and tie itself off. So we've got the mainsail up. We now have to connect the boom to the mainsail. Our original paces had uh, a, um, a main sail that didn't have a, uh, a rope on, along the bottom, but these ones do. So I'm going to put the, the boom in there. Got long arms, it helps. We just slide that rope into the track. Then, when we get to the front, we just slot this in here. If someone's holding the other end of the boom, they must not push it. Whoever is doing this end needs to control it, otherwise, someone will get their thumb pinched. a knot in the end of this and you'll also notice that there's a knot in the end of the, um, the the end that goes through the cleat and both knots are there so we don't lose this little bit of rope on the end of the boom there's a little slot we put that knot in the slot and then we can pull this out sort of a medium amount if it's really windy, we might want to pull it out a bit harder, but medium amount. We've already got the main sheet threaded, so that's all sorted out. The bang. That's the one with the yellow cord, as you knew from before. And at the end of the bang, there's this little gadget that fits in a slot onto the boom. That's in now. Now, there are several shackles here. We do not undo any of them. The only thing we do is slot a little thing into the boom. Now, we then have to thread this 
through a hole there. Do that. And we can pull that into the cleat. Now that is used to adjust the van. This is different to our other boats. The other boats, we just adjusted the bang on the bang itself. This is a bit more convenient, especially if you're um, sailing by yourself. You can get to the bang very easily, pull it up as hard as you need to. Now, the last thing as far as in the boat goes is the centerboard. The centerboard has a rope that pulls it up out of the water. Now it also has a rubber shock cord that pulls this rope which pulls it down. So we can adjust the position of the centerboard. Most of the time we'd want it to go all the way down. We have found that we haven't quite got this tension in the um, the bungee pulling the board down correct yet but when you get in the water you might have to grab that and pull that down once you get in deep enough water when you need to get it up again you may have to push it a little bit and pull this and lock it in so it holds the board up last but not least we've got the rudder the rudder is actually tied to the boat the reason for that the reason is that if <clears throat> someone doesn't put the pin in the rudder something I'm about to show you how to do then the rudder can fall overboard and go to the bottom of the lake we don't want that to happen so you don't untie this you don't untie that down there you can put the rudder on perfectly well without touching that safety rope okay pins go in just like that and you've got your rudder into its pintles and we now put this pin through here and theoretically if that rudder tries to come out now it can't we don't put the rudder on till we're actually ready to go into the water not when we're in the water but ready to go into the water that way the rudder bounces down while we're transporting the boat it doesn't get wrecked on the um, on the ground as it hits the ground the, um, the rudder when we're sailing the boat we need to push the rudder all the way forward now there should be enough drag on the rudder to leave it down, it'll, it'll stay down and when we come into shore we should be starting to pull the centerboard up, our arm should go over the back of the boat and we should pull the rudder up to the horizontal position. Now the packing away of the boat is roughly the reverse of that. So maybe we'll do another video some other time for that.